So today's topic is mini lessons with minecraft.edu. Uh, we are at Tech and Design. We are a department with NSAISD. And what we do is we help teachers, students, campuses, and other departments integrate technology um, using a future ready mindset into how they approach 21st century skills within the classroom and with our students. For today, for a successful participation, make sure that you interact with me. Um, I love to hear your opinions and how you're feeling about the topic itself. If there is something that I need for you to do outside of the presentation, I usually say eyes in Zoom. So that way you know to come back to the tab that has the Zoom on it. If you wanna take notes, feel free to do so. If you have any questions about any unrelated topics, please hold those until the end of the actual session. So today's presentation actually maps to the T-Test planning dimensions 1.1. And of course, it has its own ISTE standard. We're gonna learn a little bit about minecraft.edu. We're going to explore the minecraft.edu website to make sure that we are able to locate the resources, lessons, and activities that will help you bring this into your classroom. We're gonna practice a coding activity on the Arrow of Code website. We will participate in a live Minecraft.edu game. And I'll explain a little bit more about how you would be able to do multiplayer with that. Let's see. Also, we are going to talk about the option of becoming a certified Minecraft.edu teacher through Microsoft's Teacher Academy, if you are not familiar with that platform. Questions so far before we go any further? All right. It looks like everybody is there. I am going to go ahead and paste in the information again that I offered at the very beginning, just to make sure that everyone has a link to the resources. And then let me go ahead and start the main part of the presentation, which is what is Minecraft EDU? So for those of you who are here, um, let me know whether or not you, if you've heard about Minecraft or Minecraft EDU or anything in between. Feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself so that we can have that chat. My kids would get on it just for like a, a free day, free time kind of. I never thought about putting many lessons to it. I don't even really know how it goes. So, so when your students so actually, Minecraft. so when your students use Minecraft.edu, is it through a district setup on through district class, devices? Through class link. Oh, uh, through class link. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Um, are you with FCISD or, or a yes, different district? I'm oh. at Winston. Okay. So um, we do have it available for students to use as an app on our iPads. And we also have it through Classlink, which is available through our Chromebooks too. So you can get it either way. Um, since it's out there and the kids, of course, find it first, we want to make sure that you as an instructor or a teacher is able to go ahead and craft the lessons to go along with it. So it becomes instructional. Okay. Uh, anyone else want to share about Minecraft and Minecraft EDU? All right. So let's go ahead and continue. This is a video. Um, if you have the presentation, which I hope you do, um, please feel free to go ahead and watch this. I'm not going to play it right now. But it mainly deals with the fact that Minecraft as a game was actually purchased by Microsoft. So once it was bought by Microsoft, Microsoft then had the code to go ahead and do the EDU version of it. So it talks a little bit about how that was actually crafted. Uh, we would need to remember that the Minecraft.edu is a little bit different from the one that the students are used to playing. Um, this one has built into it certain components that are not found in the regular Minecraft uh, game itself, such as you as an instructor have the ability to use what are called border blocks. So you can kind of cage students into a certain area 
so they're not roaming free among the world that you build or that you have them use. Um, it will also allow the students to keep track of what the activity happens to be through using the camera to take pictures and also the portfolio. So the pictures go in the portfolio, the portfolio is shared with the teacher. So that way you can go ahead and check for knowledge to make sure the student's on task. Uh, there are chalk, chalk boards, which allows you to go ahead and type in instructions. So when the student goes into the world, they find that board, they're able to read exactly what they need to do. And then they can go ahead and continue to do whatever the assignment is. And of course, there is the ability for you to go ahead and bring in non-player characters. So the person that you see over here on the left-hand side is a non-player character. Is there anyone out there who plays games, video games? So usually I have to kind of describe exactly what an NPC happens to be. It's a character who doesn't do anything except provide information to whoever the player happens to be. And this is a great opportunity for you to go ahead and have characters that look like certain people. So the student has a guide basically there throughout the lesson. Any questions about this? No, we're good? Okay, if I go too fast, tell me, because I live and breathe video games. And this is just one of the things that I find myself playing at three o'clock in the morning, that's my problem. But once you all actually get into this too, if you have access to this, you will find yourself hopefully doing the same thing. Um, often when we share Minecraft at EDU with teachers, it's under the assumption that you would, of course, be there to guide the students in, but then you would kind of step back, you know? I've often heard from people, I don't really don't understand a game. I don't want to play the game. It's confusing. I really want you guys to go ahead and take the opportunity to join the students in Minecraft, okay? To get used to how you move around the world, get used to how you build, and then, of course, destroy. That's always an option in there, too, if you allow it, so that you're able to go ahead and work with them. The students often appreciate it when you can come by and take a look and say, oh, my gosh, you got to that level? I had trouble doing this. How did you solve that? Okay. Instead of just standing back and saying, I don't understand any of this. You guys do it. Okay. So invite yourself into the conversation by playing the game itself. This video right here kind of shows a teacher in action where they're going through and doing Minecraft.edu as an after-school program. So if you don't do it during your actual class time, it may be that you might wanna have the kids either do Minecraft or do some type of tech program either after school or during an advisory, um, giving them the opportunity not only to play the game itself, which is great, but the most important part, I think, is the collaboration that goes into creating those worlds. The fact that they get to learn to talk and share and argue with purpose with each other as they try to solve the problems. Does that make sense? So it could be something that you either do once or twice a week, once or twice a month, but it's you kind of being there and having the kids work together or separately as they try to solve what's going on in the world. Okay, skipping over, going on. All right, so if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to go ahead and put that in the chat or unmute yourself if you like to. So for myself, um, when I actually got started with Minecraft, it was Minecraft. That's the one I was playing. It wasn't until someone told me, hey, they have Minecraft EDU, where I said, oh my gosh, we've done it again. Um, it's a trend. And I know that most of our kids probably are past that, but they're familiar with it or they've heard of it. So we want to make sure that we still invite them in to play, but we invite them in to play with purpose, okay? And the Among Us one, I don't think we have that approved yet. It's a different conversation. I would encourage you to consider 
I'm going through the process of getting a certification in how to use Minecraft. So there's a link in here that will take you to um, this screen, which is the Microsoft Learn Educator Center. So there are a lot of different um, classes and topics and courses that are located in this setup for you to use. So you'll get your CPE hours, but you'll also get your certifications and you'll get your badge. So the badges are cool because you could put that on your name and your email and people will be amazed. So what I'm looking for right here is the fact that I do have the option to do STEM and um, coding and esports. So if I click there, um, there is the link over here for the program that deals with Minecraft. But there are also different links that deal with other um, subject areas that you might be interested in doing. So as you spend your time during the summer, sleeping and resting and bonding with family, consider whether or not you want to just take a couple classes here through this portal to learn a little bit more about tech and how to use tech in your classroom. Questions about this here? No? So I'm gonna give you a moment. Um, I'm going to actually copy and paste this link into the chat. Um, if you want to go ahead and click on that link, it will take you to this page. Uh, just take a moment and scroll around and see what the course offerings are. And see whether or not there's something in here that you would like to go ahead and take a look. Tanya, I have a question. Yes. Um, you, I heard you mention earlier that Minecraft, maybe I think I misunderstood that it was in class link. Is that right? Or it's not? I think Ms. Sandoval said that it was in class. Oh, link. okay. Because um, that's something. Go ahead. Sorry. So for me, I actually haven't seen it there. I have seen it inside of the iPad um, portal, the app portal to install onto the iPads uh, for it to be inside of class link. Um, the program itself, when on the laptop or Chromebook, actually has to be installed. So I think it's set up on our Chromebooks, or it was set up on our Chromebooks, where you could actually go ahead and click inside of the Chrome um, or the Google Play Store to go ahead and search, find, and install it. Oh, okay. I think that's what it is probably. I was looking on mine, and I can't find it on there. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, yeah, I guess I would have to install it. Or... Correct. Correct. So if you're using a district device, mm -hmm. it may be that you have to have the help desk do the installation for you. If you are at home, um, of course, you can install it for yourself. But one of the things that you would probably need to know about it is that it does require for you and also the students to log in using your district email account because it is a paid um, Microsoft option that we have as a district because we pay for Microsoft. Oh, okay, that helps clarify, thank you. Okay, sure. So all of you as teachers um, through SCISD, you have access to it, all your students do, depending on which device they're going to use. If you're outside of our district, it would be a recommendation for you to go ahead and talk to your IT department to see if they have a license for minecraft.edu and for the steps that you need to take in order to access it. Um, questions about the teacher academy options? Um, no? So one of the great things about this is if you sign up for the teacher academy, sometimes they have a live cohort that's going on at the same time. So you don't have to go through the actual course by yourself. If the live cohort is going on, they meet uh, certain times during the week and then you get to join in. There's somebody from Minecraft who's actually leading the process um, and they have a uh, great, um, I don't know what to call him. He's kind of a guru. He's a guy who knows everything about minecraft.edu. He's from uh, Ireland and he just, takes you entirely into what that program can do. And it's phenomenal. He's, 
Yeah. He lives and breathes it. So take the opportunity, go through, see if this is for you. Uh, let me know if you need any assistance because I am certified, which means that I can provide guidance. They told me so. So if you need help, let me know. This right here is a free poster. This is just something for you to click on and take a look at. It kind of explains some of the components that goes into the EDU version. As mentioned before, uh, students have the opportunity to use cameras, to take pictures. There is a book and quill option that will allow them to go ahead and record, such as in a journal, um, some of their adventures. That journal can be shared with teachers, so you can kind of keep track of the um, strategies that students are using to solve issues. Um, there is a difference between how you move around on the actual laptop or Chromebook as it's, um, you would actually move around when using the iPad. And we will see that in a moment as soon as we get into the game itself. But yes, please take a look at the free poster to learn more about what Minecraft EDU is. We already did this. You guys had the opportunity to go to the website. So we are moving on to this here, which is the opportunity for you to do a quick round of coding when it comes to Minecraft. The hour of code, how many people are familiar with the hour of code? I see a no, I see a maybe. Oh, I see a thumbs up, always good. Always good. So awesome, Ms. Hill. Thank you. So what I would suggest is, is that if you want to start uh, using Minecraft or Minecraft EDU, I always have to put the EDU at the end, with your students, um, one of the things is that you don't want to just drop them into the environment because then it becomes a toy that they're playing with, right? So what you want to do is kind of change the paradigm just a little bit more as in, I know you're probably familiar with this because you've used it before, but this version is actually educational. It's just like we have the books and the textbooks and the online resources. This is a online resource to help you do this. And this is what we're going to use. So I'm gonna have you guys go into the Hour of Code because a lot of the things that we're going to do with the Minecraft EDU is not only explore, but we are also going to learn how to do coding, okay? And of course, I won't remember anything I've just said, so hopefully you guys just wrote that down. But this is a great chance for you to kind of offer the opportunity for coding to be part of the Minecraft environment. I am going to go ahead and click on this link here, and I'm also going to drop it into the chat so that you can join me, okay? So this is the Hour of Code or code.org website. Um, the Hour of Code is something we do every December. It gives the students the opportunity to learn coding using Block or Java, just depending on what the activity happens to be. If you click on this link, it will take you to the Minecraft Hour of Code tutorials. And there's a couple of them. Some of them are simplistic, Others are a little bit more advanced. Um, the one that I usually start off with is this one over to the left-hand side, which happens to be the Voyage Aquatic. The one that we're focusing in on has a Minecraft theme associated with it, but it's still the same basic game that everything else has. There's also a Star Wars one. Uh, the reason behind this, the reason why I share it is because it does take, um, an opportunity for you as a teacher to bring in that terminology that goes along with what coding is, what science is, what math is, um, spatial uh, abilities to think in three to four dimensions. All of that right here is part of the beginning of coding and the beginning of coding languages. Uh, this is block coding which means that there are words on the actual blocks themselves that will tell the students what the block can do. So you have an objective that you need to accomplish. There are challenges along the way. It starts off simplistic. It gets more complicated as you go along. 
over in the upper right hand corner or left hand, excuse me, is the tiny little window with your person there who is waiting for you to tell them what to do. On the right hand side is your workspace where you actually start to combine certain blocks in order to do certain actions. And then of course you click on run to see whether or not you succeed. So that's all built into this one window. I've had students who are actually going to go through this uh, quickly because they have that logical sequential mind where this makes sense to them. I have other students who are just stuck, but they work through it. And if you pair them, it's even better where they start working with other people, okay? The key to this is that we give our kids the opportunity to try. We give them the opportunity to try. So I would encourage you as a teacher to consider going to the hour of code and just trying something out, okay? It's a great opportunity for students to also know about directions, instructions, cause and effect. So coding can do that for them too. Questions about this? So we were gonna take a moment or two to actually try this one out, but I've looked down at the time so I think I might move just a little bit. Can I give you two or three minutes to go ahead and try this? Or would you like for me to do the first one so you can see it? I'm sorry, would your you audio. Demonstrate it, please. Go would ahead and demonstrate, demonstrate it. Yes. Oh, the dance party is the one that we did. They loved it. So uh, the we, dance party yeah, is part uh, of the site. Yes, right. That's the one we did. Because it was so, a little bit simpler at the time, you know, just getting them in there and getting them motivated, but that's what we did, we did the dance party. So during, this one too is a, little bit, is a little bit easier too. Um, if we look at what the instructions are, you need supplies, to voyage ahead, collect the boat by going to the chest. So if I take a look at my person right here, I need to move him one, two, two spaces up, okay? So that means that I need one move forward, I need another move forward, and then I run, which is run the program to see whether or not I did what I needed to do. In that case, he's jumping up and down, so I actually did what I needed to do in order to succeed. Uh, one of the things that I like about code.org is that not only does it show you the block coding, but if you click here, it shows you exactly what the JavaScript looks like. So when students want to do coding for a living or if students want to do coding just for fun, it's essential that they progress from block coding, which is the one that I have the words on it, to JavaScript or Python, because that's what the language is for uh, creating apps or creating other things that people use in real life, okay? So that's what we want to make sure that we show them. And if I go back to the presentation itself, this right here is how you would actually use coding within the Minecraft program. So if you wanted to take a look at that, please feel free to do so. So inside minecraft.edu, there is a coding component that also uses block coding. So that's another step on the ladder. So start off by having them do it and then consider using the lessons associated with the coding part. I want to go through and show you guys real quick how we actually start using the actual source. Questions so far? I think we lost the person. I'll email her. So if we go to the website for minecraft.edu, and this is the website itself, I want to kind of warn you ahead of time. Let me show you by going to Google, because this happens to me all the time. If I go to Google and I type in minecraft.edu, I actually get the website. When I do this at home, I get something entirely different. 
but I got something entirely different too. <laughs> I know exactly what you were talking about. I was like, what is this? I know. I, I didn't click on anything. It looked dangerous. It looked like it could ruin the computer or something. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I think it's because of my AT&T service. But either way, this is the place where you want to go. This is the site that you need to go to if you want to start using the program. There's two options along the top. Um, first is how it works. So it talks about what it is, how it works. This is the area to download it. So if you are using a personal device and you want to try it out this summer, um, you would go to download. It would kind of go through and figure out exactly what computer you're using. Oh, is that in Espanol? Okay. So that will give you a chance to download the file to your computer. And I don't know why he's doing that, but hey, good enough. You would scroll down and choose your platform and then it will go through the installation process. If you are to use this, once again, you have to make sure that you have access to your district account or else you have to pay for it. So <laughs> as we do downloads, getting started educators, there's a lot of things in here that you might wanna review. I go straight to what it can it do for me. And that area is right here where you have teach with Minecraft, okay? And this is the area where I would like to go ahead and direct you guys. So as stated in the actual um, introduction or program or whatever we were doing for today, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew the location of what is called the mini lessons or kits. <gasps> Why are you doing this to me? En-us. 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 There you go, okay. So if you are able to go to this link here that I'm placing inside of the chat for you all, right there, go ahead and join me so that we can take a quick look at this together if you are not there already. So the process would be is that we have the resources here for us to take a look at. I need to find a lesson that I can kind of do with my students to have more about the environment or more about language arts or a science project. I wanna introduce them to a math concept. Um, maybe it's an opportunity for them to do an art project or dive deep into digital citizenship. All of those options are here. So if I want to find a topic, I would just go ahead and click on it. It will take me to what that category happens to be. I would scroll down a little bit further and it will give me the following cards or challenge cards, okay? I would then go ahead and choose one that I would like. My favorite one out of the ones that we see here is the B challenge, which is B creative. Okay, there are lesson objectives, a description of what needs to be done from the students, from the teachers. There is the opportunity for you to go ahead and print out this information if you need it. And then the process of going ahead and downloading the challenge itself. So the worlds that are part of the challenge are already built for you. So there isn't a need for you to start from scratch, basically. Okay. So what I would like to do is to give you guys the opportunity to go through and just take a look around the site itself to see if there's anything in here that you would find favorable for you to use 
or for you to explore. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and open one of these so that we can go through this together to see exactly how it works. Okay, any questions? So let's have probably about four minutes for you to go through and just take a look around the site itself and at some of the challenges. Okay. Okay. Um, questions so far? Did you guys get a chance to go in and take a look around? That is cool. Okay. So what yes, we're looking, looking at is, um, any questions? I have a question real quick. I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you do get into those worlds and it gives you that link, will that link, you can also use that link in Canvas for the kids? Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's probably one of the things that we need to talk about when it comes to our situation and how it's hosted within the district uh, system. You know. um, the fact is, is that Minecraft works best when you have the multiplayer option available, meaning that as a teacher, I can go in and I can host a world. I can provide a code to the students. The students go into their Minecraft, they type in the code, and then they start populating inside of my world. So that means that I have essentially a classroom of my kids I can see electronically inside of my Minecraft environment. That's the best scenario. But that requires that certain things are actually turned off and on within the district's network in order for that to work. And that does take a little bit of work to happen. If that doesn't happen, and if you're unable to do that, another alternative option is that the students have a copy of the world that you want them to be in. So they can go in and they can get the same file either through, like you mentioned, uh, you can upload the file that you want them to use to Canvas. They can then click on that and download it so they can have access to it inside their own Minecraft environment. They can also share worlds with you in the same process. So if they download one, I want them to do this, this, and this, they did it. I can walk over and see, or I can ask them, upload that file to whatever, so I can open it myself and see what you did. If you are planning to use it within your classroom and you have it so that you have to have the students download the option, I would say that you also want them to probably get into the habit of working together. So you as a teacher don't have to go through and investigate 25 separate worlds or 35, depending on the number of kids, but you can have that number by having kids work as partners. And then it's only half the number you need to use. Does that make sense? Okay, so you have the resources there and the resources are there for you to go ahead and use as part of, and let me go ahead and switch back over. So this is your library, your library of resources for you to use to have your students start using um, Minecraft. There are other resources on here. I have resources also located in the presentation that will show you how do you go through the process of learning how to play the game. So let me skip over real quick to kind of show you the other resources. So there are videos online that will show you how to play. There are websites inside of the Minecraft site itself that will teach you how to play and such. And there, of course, happens to be that teacher academy course that will teach you not only how to play, but how to teach others or how to use Minecraft as an instructional tool. I wanna show you Minecraft itself so you can kind of get familiar with what it looks like. I have Minecraft here on my laptop. I also have Minecraft also on my iPad. My recommendation is, is to not get used to actually using it solely on one device. I'm still learning how to use it on the iPad. The controls are different. I feel more comfortable with a mouse. But when you hand this over to a student, they adapt. 
so we must also adapt to. So here on my computer, let's see. There is the minecraft.edu app. And the way that I got that is I had, uh, this is a teacher's computer, so I can go to the Minecraft or the Microsoft store, find it and install it. So the profile is different than a student. So I have the ability to install approved apps and this one is approved, okay? So it may be a little bit different for your kids. So once you find it, it's requiring me, of course, to do that verification that I love so much. So this is the secret number. I was gonna ask you your number. Pardon me? No, I'm just kidding. I said, I see your number. <laughs> so I know you probably can't hear it, but Minecraft has soothing music that goes along with it. I love the music. Oh, yes, I love the music. So the first thing you probably do is that you get the kids into Minecraft. You also um, give them the opportunity to kind of discuss exactly what an avatar is, what does it represent, how does it represent you, because there are a lot of rep our avatars that you can actually choose from. Oh, that's kind of cute. Let's see. What do I say? And confirm. So that is the skin that I'm using to play. Notice the buttons that are here. I can go straight into it or I can go through and see if there's anything new that they've created or I can customize settings. Um, I am going to go ahead and just go straight into the play mode. All right, so with that play mode, and I need to kind of emphasize that your kids, if they have access to minecraft.edu, they have the same setup that you see here. They also have the ability to create worlds, okay? So that probably is a discussion that you would have with them when it comes to norms and expectations. We're using Minecraft. And I know that you guys can go in and I love the fact that you are going to do positive activities together. Let's talk a little bit about what that happens to be. What does it look like? If you're playing with somebody else, we're not going in and we're not destroying what they're building, okay? We are making sure that when we go into playing Minecraft.edu, we're doing it because we're doing a positive experience. Okay. So here, I can view the worlds that I've already built, or I can go straight to the library. I would recommend that if this is the first time that you've done Minecraft and you're able to get in, please go to the how to play area. So this is in the library. It's an option for how to play, because this will teach you how to use the device that you're using. How do you move around using the keyboard? How do you move around using an iPad? So there's lessons here for both. There's also additional tutorials. This is the coding one that I was talking about. So if you want to go into here, see how coding is. There's also a chemistry tutorial. So you can build certain formulas and certain um, elements that you couldn't do in an actual lab because either they're toxic toxic or they're very um, volatile. You can build that inside of Minecraft. So if you want to do a glow stick, if you want to do something that might eat through a desk, inside Minecraft, you can go in and combine chemicals together and you can use their lab to build those elements. I'm going to go back and kind of click on the start here keyboard because these are some of the actual lessons that you would want to go through. How do you move around? How do you interact? How do you do chalkboards and such? So setting this up with your students, you'll have kids who have done Minecraft since they were babies, but do they know exactly what they're doing? And do they have the ability 
to teach someone else. Okay, that's the key. Oh, miss, I already know how to do this. I've been playing Minecraft forever. That's awesome. Then you are one of my special instructors and you now have the ability to teach other people how to. But I wanna make sure that you are able to share this knowledge with everything that I need for you to do, which includes going through these exercises to learn something that you may not know, okay? So that's this opportunity. But another key element is once they learn how to play, once you learn how to play, take a look at the subject kits because many of the items that you see here are also the same ones that you saw on the website. So you'll see some of the topics are the same. Digital citizenship, art and design, history and culture. So you can go online in order to get the lesson and understand exactly what the um, strategies are, some of the elements that you want the kids to understand. Or, ooh, ancient Ireland. Okay, I'm distracted, sorry. Uh, hmm. So this information is now here. Notice the lesson plan is here. Notice that you can assign or share this with students. The step is find what you want, read about it, test it out. Click on create world. It will build it for you. And now that you've gone through and you've learned how to move around, and you learned how to actually interact. This is now the opportunity for you to see exactly what someone else has built as part of what this lesson happens to be. It will build the terrain for you. It will add in a lot of other elements and resources. And what I'm hoping is that this one will have chickens. So I love chickens, let's see. So it's taking a moment to load. Over on the left-hand side are the codes for you to be able to move around. Ooh. Who is this person? That's the guide. I am going to go past you and I'm not gonna pay attention. I'm just walking around here. I guess I probably should actually pay attention to the guides. Ooh. Either way, so go in, take a look, um, discover the different elements as mentioned before, the NPCs, the buildings, the ability for you to go in and probably in this case, use your space bar to jump and also use your space bar twice to fly oh. and so on. Press the escape key and you can save and exit. I'm gonna click on this tab right here because this is the hosting option. And it's also part of the instructions on the site of how you as a teacher can start using this as a multiplayer, multiplayer option with your students. So I have realized that we are actually close to the end of the time that I had with you guys. Before I go any further, let me ask you if there are any questions as far as what you've seen so far, any instructions or any assistance that I can provide in order for you to start using the program. And are you interested in using the program itself? If you say no, I will not have my feelings hurt. But the thing is, is that if you choose to use this as an option for next year, talk to me, let me know what's going on, and I will be glad to provide the support that you might need in order to do it. Even if it's just a small group of kids. Ah, brilliant. So uh, in the option that I had here, and I'm actually going to escape from the game. And I'm going to paste in, again, my contact information and the option for you to get the presentation and to sign in. 
after your wonderful summer break, email me. Let me know that you attended the Minecraft course that we had for Ready Tech Go and that you are interested in testing this out with your students at whatever campus you happen to be, um, SAISD. And then I will work with you to see if we can have a pilot, a small little pilot on doing something easy and then growing to something that's a little bit more complicated, just depending on how you want to approach it, okay? Yes, I would say that if you want to go through and have a Minecraft after school program, let's do it. Let us work together and let's do it, okay? So you have the resources, you know how you need to actually download because it's on the site. You know, you need to have an SEISD uh, email and you will be able to go to the site itself to look around, to get more information. You can do the Teacher Academy to learn a little bit more about what you can do as an instructor when it comes to Minecraft. But I would just take a chance to go in, look around, enjoy.